Welcome everybody to our quick 30 minute webinar. We're going to get going right at the top of the hour today. We have a lot to cover. Um, my name is Phil Corbin, marketing director here at Verify. I'm joined here today with Dan Schmidt and Victor Verba, our superstar systems engineers. In today's webinar, we're going to cover part two of Cisco CDR cradle to grave reporting, more specifically how it can complement UCCX or your contact center. Going through the intro here as quick as possible. We're going to start off with a quick overview of Verify, what we do, jump into a live demo, an in depth view of CDR, cradle to grave reporting, how you can track complete call flows for each call in a single report. We'll show you how to view the cradle to grave sequence showing related calls before and after within the same period searched. We'll also show you how to identify sequenced events like transferred, forwarded, and conference calls. We're going to Pause for Q&A, get some of your questions answered during the demo. If you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the Q&A panel. It's in the bottom right of the WebEx. Um, again, if you have any questions as Vic's going through the demo, please ask them in the Q&A panel. After the demo, we're gonna pause for Q&A and get those questions answered. And then after Q&A, we will reward one lucky attendee a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang around to see what you may have won. All right, uh, Verify, we are the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaboration. We provide industry leading CDR reporting and analytics, customizable dashboards and widgets, and also UCCX reporting, which we'll be focusing on today. Remote phone control, change management, but again, today we're focusing more on CDR specific cradle to grave reporting. If you have any other questions on any of our other features, we can most definitely take them offline and get those answered. So let's take a look cradle to grave reporting in action. We have Vic, also known as CDR Jesus, here to show us the way. Vic, I'm gonna pass you the ball. Sounds great, thank you, Phil. Sure. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen out here. All right, I wanna thank everybody for attending today. Um, the purpose of today's session is really to take a little bit deeper dive into our cradle to grave reporting. Um, if you were able to attend our previous webinar, we took kind of a general overview of Cradle to Grave. Um, if you did miss that webinar, um, you are uh, you have full access to it. You can definitely navigate over to verify.com. Down towards the bottom, you can sign up for our new webinars, but you could also review uh, past webinars as well. So if you did miss our last Cradle to Grave reporting and you need just a general overview, feel free to go ahead and just navigate over to verify.com and take a look at some of our existing webinars. So the purpose of today um, is to really take a much deeper dive into CCX or and uh, CDR uh, cradle to grave reporting. Uh, the demonstration that we're going to do today is very universal. So we're going to focus strictly really around the CCX and, and some samples of UCCX and how cradle to grave can kind of help your call center environment. Um, but keep in mind that this is just an example. A lot of what we're going to build here can relate to hunt groups, native call queuing, maybe just general operators and things of that nature. So we're really going to go ahead and take a high level overview, look through some of the cradle to grave, and then build a nice uh, UCCX based cradle to grave report that's going to be able to develop some summary metrics and kind of how some of your calls are being handled. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I need to isolate my UCCX calls. So within Verify and then on my particular demo system, I know that I'm using UCCX triggers. So from that perspective, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna see all of my calls going into my UCCX. Um, I'm not trying to pick out certain legs of calls at this point in time. I just wanna see everything that comes into my UCCX regardless of how it gets there. So in my case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus in on my UCCX triggers and you're gonna see some of those in a second. Um, and I'm gonna say, I wanna see any call that comes into the terminating device of UCCX. And in my particular case, I'm gonna to wanna to see that for the previous week. So let's go ahead and run just a very general search here. So now you can see basically what I come up with is about 1300 calls, everything going into my UCCX. So really all I'm doing right now, because I wanna focus on cradle to grave, it, grave is I'm gathering information. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and export this report right here and I'm gonna enable what's called cradle to grave. So it's a very simple toggle. I'm just gonna turn that guy on. I'm gonna change my format to an HTML format. Um, HTML is just a personal preference. Um, I would say if you're looking at cradle to grave and you have a lot of detail columns, HTML, Excel, or CSV work wonderfully. Um, PDF will work as well, but 
because it's a PDF, it has a tendency to kind of wrap columns and things when there's a lot of columns. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is run this guy. So with Cradle to Grave, essentially what Verify is doing right now is we're pulling back all of the call records, those 1,326 calls that we just had. But then what we're going to do on top of that is we're going to go ahead and formulate the sequences of events that your customers are going through and what's happening with those calls as they come in. So as we take a look at this report, you're going to see a lot of calls, 1,326 to be exact. So when I turned on Cradle to Grave, we did a little bit more than just say, hey, here's your data. What we did is we actually added this column over here. So what this column does is actually provides us the sequence of events that took place. So what I'm looking at here, and let me go ahead and zoom in on these guys a little bit. What I'm looking at here are not just my search, which is anything terminating with UCCX, but I'm also seeing what happens before and after that. So what I'm seeing here is the entire sequence of events that this caller went through as they flowed into my call system. So taking a deeper dive into that, I could see, you know, the vast majority of my calls here have about two related calls. Call comes in, goes into my UCCX trigger, goes to an agent, agent handles the call, end of call. Very straightforward, simple scenario. But in UCCX, we want to see a little bit more than that. So in other words, what we're going to go ahead and build today is I want to know how many calls are coming into my agents, how many calls are being transferred outside of my contact center. So metrics like that are not something you can get from contact center because contact center is going to strictly focus in on what happens in contact center. So let's say, for example, I'm an agent. I take a call. I transfer that call out to a different department, somebody that's outside of my contact center. Well, that's not something you're going to be able to pull out of UCCX. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this example right here. And what I'm looking at is a call comes in, goes through my Unity system. They hit an option, routes them over to my uh, my call center. I can see that they, you know, they pop into my UCCX trigger queue here. Um, a lot of times what I see historically in CDR is a lot of these triggers information are built in your scripts. So a lot of times we can relate these back to individual queues and things of that nature. But in this example, I could see a call comes in, goes into my UCCX trigger, comes out. I could see that they talk to our friend Jenna over here for about 40 seconds. Um, then this is a perfect example. Then Jenna takes that call and she transfers it to Devin. Devin is not one of my agents. So in my system, I'm very aware of who my agents are. My agent extensions start with seven. Okay, so right there I have a filter. I've got a way of being able to identify calls that are outside of my contact center. So we're going to utilize this information. We're going to take a look at this call here and maybe a few of them, a few others. And we're actually going to build a report that's going to be able to tell us how many calls came into my UCCX, how many calls are being transferred to my various departments, um, but then also maybe how many calls are coming into my, my agents, but then being transferred back into a queue. So we're going to take a look at a couple different scenarios, and we're going to utilize this report here quite often because the way that we're going to build this within Cradle to Grave is we're going to use these fields to actually build filters to not just pull out what we searched, but to pull out things outside of what we searched. So I'm going to say, hey, should give me all my UCCX calls, and then out of all my UCCX calls, how many of them got transferred to rentals? How many of them got transferred maybe to owner services? So let's go ahead and jump into it, and I'm going to walk you through how we're going to build that report. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a report right off of our general quick search screen here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export my results. I'm going to save this report for future use. That means that whatever we build out here is going to end up in our reports repository so we can go back and edit it, schedule it daily, weekly, monthly, hourly, and things like that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our search sets. We're right here, we're bringing back every call that went into our call center. But what we're really going to go ahead and look at and focus on today is our cradle to grave search set. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and add a cradle to grave search set. So let's go ahead and take a look at our report. Let's go ahead and go back to our calling scenario here. Let me blow this guy back up. For some reason, it's changing uh, formats on me here. So let's go back to our calling scenario. I think it was, oh, let's just go back up to the top and click on it here. So there we are. So let's go ahead and focus in on this one. So I want to see all the calls that come into rentals. Let's say I want to see all the calls that came into my UCCX and then got transferred to rentals outside of my, my call center. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate some values here. I'm going to say, okay, what makes this call 
because I don't need to report this call. I know this is a UCCX call. This, this is reporting in my UCCX. This is reporting in CDR. What makes this call right here different from this one or this one or this one? So a couple different things. One, I, can, I know that my UCCX extensions start with seven. So I can use that as an isolating metric. So let's go ahead and add that in there. I'm going to call this agents to, oh, we'll just go ahead and call this agents to rent, rentals. So I said my first criteria is going to be my search. I know that my UCCX extensions start with a lead seven and are four digits. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what, I don't want any call that has seven and four digits. So let's go ahead and say anything that I do not want anything that starts with or equals 7XXX. So now what I've done from my counts is I've, elimin I've eliminated these legs here because I don't need to count those. So all these guys that start with 7 that are my agents, I've eliminated them from my, my search. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to say, okay, now that I've eliminated that, I want to be able to see how many calls are going to my rentals group. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add my rentals department in here. So now I'm going to say my terminating uh, department here is going to be rentals. So now what I've done is I've isolated things even more. So I went through and I said, okay, I don't want this call record. Um, I want anything that is not starting with seven. So I've, I've isolated this record, but I also only want things that went to rentals. So now I've isolated this record specifically and have omitted this one or anything else that starts with a seven or anything else that didn't go to rentals. So the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna use some of these other fields. So you can see where we've got call forward all, call deflection, last redirect reasons, and things of that nature. So the next thing I wanna be able to do is I know these calls are coming into my agents and they're being transferred to people outside of my call center. So I'm gonna go ahead and focus in on this last redirect reason right here of call transfer. So by adding that, I'm just gonna set another layer of isolation on top of my cradle to grave search that's gonna say, hey, now only show me calls that did not start with a lead seven that went to my rentals department and were specifically called transfers. So you may not even need to add this field here. This is a, a, another way of really just kind of doing some additional isolation. I like to be able to keep those in here just to make sure that I don't get any false flags. So now we're going to go to my report here and I'm going to go ahead and add last redirect reason. Add that in here and I'm going to say call transfer. Now you'll notice there's also something else in here called blind transfer. Now depending on how your agents work, we can go ahead, you know, if I could spell, there we go. Sometimes they may blind transfer the call. The nice thing about that and having both of those, maybe they're not supposed to blind transfer calls, but having this value, I could actually create a separate filter to say, show me all the calls that were transferred to rentals. Now show me all the calls that were blind transferred to rentals. So we do have that additional flexibility. So now what I've done is I've taken my search out of every single call that came into my UCCX and I've isolated some summary values down to one particular scenario. All calls that came into my UCCX and were trans transferred to my rentals group. One very important key here is this guy. So this is the difference between an and or, or statement. So with it unchecked, I'm going to go out to, out of all those calls that came into the UCCX and I'm going to pull back every call that meets this criteria. Then I'm going to pull back every call that meets this criteria and so on and so forth for all my search criteria. That's going to be a lot of calls because that's every call that went into my UCCX. But by checking this guy, what it's going to say is whatever calls I pull back have to meet all of this criteria. So now we're going to go ahead and give this guy a save, give this guy a run. We're going to give it a name. We'll call it UCCX trans for sample, and I'll put my name on there, and let's give this guy a run. So now what we're doing is we're running essentially that same report that we have here, but we're doing some very high-level isolation. We're going through, we're pulling back all of the calls that came into the UCCX, all 1,326, but then we're saying give us an additional layer of summary to be able to show those calls that went into the UCCX, and I actually forgot a very important feature here. So give me one second here. Yeah, let's see, UCC, I got a lot of reports in here. 
There we are. So the one important feature I forgot is now that I added this cradle to grave search, I also want to summarize on it. So what I'm going to say is I want to see the no total number of counts that this search occurred, the total average duration, the total call duration. Much like you see in our regular search statistics, we can add those same search, search criteria into our cradle to grave search set. So let me go ahead and turn that guy on. We'll give this guy a save and give it a quick run. So what we're doing is then we're isolating those calling scenarios, and we're going to show you a separate layer of summary on top of our total count. And of course, I didn't have any because I forgot to change my date range. There we go. Let's do the previous week and run. So what we're going to see here is a second layer of summary. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add to this because it's great to be able to see your departments, but maybe I also want to be able to see how many calls are coming into certain areas or not coming into certain areas. Now, you notice I got an extremely high, uh, high count here. Um, I chose to add all of this search criteria and show it in here because you'll notice what I did is I did the opposite of what I said. So if we go back in this report, I said I didn't want anything that started with a seven. But if you'll notice my search criteria, I said equals, where I should be saying not equals. So we're going to do a quick edit. We're going to change our cradle to grave search criteria. And rather than doing equals, we're going to say does not equal. Run this guy. And here we go. So now we're going to see basically all of the calls that got transferred to our rentals department. And I can see that 67 calls right here came in through my UCCX, were hit by an agent, answered by an agent, and then specifically transferred over to our rentals group. So great information, and you can continue to compound onto this information. Um, you can add additional departments, add additional search criteria, and that's what we're going to go ahead and do right now. So now that we're pulling some good metrics, I can see how many calls are coming into my UCCX, how many are being transferred to certain part departments. Let's go ahead and add another search. Maybe not only do I want to see a different department, which I could just add this same criteria and add a different department, but maybe I want to see how many calls my agents are taking that are then being transferred back into the UCCX queue. So let's add a quick filter for that. So for that, all I'm going to do here is just click Create Cradle to Grave Search Set. Now you'll notice I have two different search sets. I've got one Agents to Rentals, and let's say Agents Back to Q, and that's what we're going to give this guy a call. So we're going to focus in on those same things. So let's see if we can find a quick call in our original report that's going to have something that's going to show us agents. This is a perfect example right here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to see all the calls that came into the UCCX, but I only want to see it if the secondary legs contain UCCX. In other words, they got then transferred back. So let's look at this record. So here's a call that originally came into our UCCX. Here's a call that got transferred back into the UCCX. So the neat thing we need to do is we need to figure out how are we going to differentiate this one, because this is a standard call. It's not a transfer back from this guy right here, which is a transfer back. So we look at the numbers. We look at the values. And I could see, you know, I can't use terminating device name. I can't use called number, but I can't use... Uh, original redirect reason, but again, I can go back to that last redirect reason. Now, anything coming into your UCCX the first time is going to have a call deflection last redirect reason. But when it gets sent back into the queue, it's then going to have a call transfer last redirect reason. So that gives us something very finite to really pull out information to be able to say, hey, these are all the calls that got transferred back. And if I kind of skip through here, I'll probably see some more like that. Well, you know what, let's just go ahead and run a report. Let's see what we got. So we're going to call this agents back to the queue. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and focus in on that terminating device name, because again, we want to pull the UCCX devices out of this particular search. And that's all we're doing is building one search. And I'm going to say UCCX, and it's going to go ahead and start with. So this is redundant. Right now, this search right here matches our same search that we have over here. But we're going to do one more thing onto this, guys. We're going to add another piece of information. Now I'm going to say that last redirect reason is going to be called transfer. Um, and for this one, we'll add blind transfer as well. And remember, we've got to make sure we check this guy here. 
So now what we've done is we've added another search set on top of our existing search set. This is going to go ahead and spit out some great information because not only am I going to see how many calls are going to my rentals department from my UCCX, I'm also going to see how many calls are being handled within my UCCX itself all on a single report. So let's give this guy a save and give him a quick run and take a look at our results. Our search time window. So we're going to get a couple different layers of summary. So you can continue to add that search set criteria in there. And if we have time, we'll go ahead and even add another one. So now what I'm looking at is that same report. I have 1,326 calls. I could see 71 of those calls got transferred right back into the queue. So and if I take a look at my cradle to grave, we're going to be able to see calls that went from queue to queue to queue. And I see that call transfer. We go ahead and take a look at our scenario here. Uh, let's see if we can find one here that went back to Q. Here's a perfect example. I'm isolating it based on the fact it starts with UCCX, but only the ones that have call transfer. These other guys are called deflection, which is a normal routine when the UCCX deflects the call back over to an agent. But here we have call transfer. So now I'm successfully able to isolate all the calls that came into my UCCX, all the calls that went to my rentals, but also all the calls that got transferred back into a queue by the agents. So there's a lot of flexibility with this. So other things that you can do is, let's say, for example, I don't know, maybe one of these uh, particular agents here is, is constantly transferring things back. Well, I can continue to compound onto this. So you'll notice right here I have last redirect DN. So I can actually take this guy right here and add it to a filter. Maybe I want to see how many times Rosemary here is transferring calls back into the queue. So very important information when you're looking at your agents. Do I have this problem with one particular agent or is it a more of a global problem? So in this case, I'm just going to take the, the same search that we have here just in the interest of time. So let's just call this Rosemary back to queue. So now all I have to do is add an additional search and add that last redirect to the end. So what I'm doing right here is I'm taking this example and I'm saying, okay, I've already isolated this call because it has UCCX, because it has call transfer. Now I'm going to isolate even more and I'm going to say now only show me the ones that came from Rosemary. So you can see the last redirect DN is Rosemary's IPCC extension. So by adding that, I'm going to go ahead and isolate just Rosemary's calls and give you a count of how many calls specifically Rosemary had sent back to the queue. I'll give this guy a run here. Search time window is the same. So now we'll see that drop down from 67 and the number that we're going to get is exactly how many calls Rosemary is actually sending back to the queue. And let's see, did I not save that guy? Oh, Rosemary back to queue. Uh, we can see we went down to 11 calls. So if we take a look at our first example here, we can see agents back to queue was 71. Let me blow that guy up a little bit. And now in our new one, we've isolated agents Rosemary back to queue, and now we're down to 11. So I can see that Rosemary took 11 calls and sent 11 calls back into the queue. So there's a lot of flexibility with what you're able to do there. I took some very broad steps, but there's other things you can do. If, for example, these uh, UCCX triggers are queue related, I can isolate which queues are coming back to. In other words, let's say 119166 belongs to my rentals queue and this particular trigger belongs to a different queue. I can say how many calls are coming into rentals and then being transferred maybe over to maintenance or another queue based off of these CCX triggers. So there's a lot of flexibility, but the idea behind this is really having the cradle to grave there because what we're doing is we're giving you the power to really build some very solid metrics on individual agents, on very high level agents like a UCCX, uh, being able to build reports based off of maybe your operators. Um, this is a very common report right here where we'll isolate operators and we'll say, hey, where are our operators transferring our calls most? Do I see a bottleneck somewhere? In other words, right here I can see in this particular case, I'm searching blind transfers, I'm looking at all my operators, and I'm looking at a particular department, but I can see they transferred 35 times to that one department. Maybe it's worth adding a unity system to alleviate some of the operators rather than having to worry about hiring another operator. But that's really the power behind cradle, cradle to Grave is not just being able to see it visually, 
but also being able to use the information inside there to develop meaningful metrics that show your customer's journey, but also show you ways to be able to improve your environment by adding additional Unity options, by talking to additional agents to determine why are we transferring calls back into queue as much or more than other agents. So I want to thank everybody for attending today. Um, I look forward to being able to see and everybody else on our next webinar. We're going to be able to cover things more. Uh, our next one's going to be um, around UCCX widgets and how to build some UCCX widgets to provide meaningful information on what your agents and things are, uh, your agents are doing, how your queues are performing, and things like that. So Phil, I'm going to go ahead and pass the ball back to you, and uh, thank you everybody for their time today. Thanks, Vic. Outstanding as usual. Thank you, Phil. All right, at this time, we're going to take five minutes here to get any of your questions you may have answered. Hey, Bill. Hunter here. Hey, Dan. We got a question? Yeah, we, yeah, we have a few questions lined up here. Uh, first question um, is from Sandy. Sandy would like to say to Vic, this is great info, but how would I go about finding our CCX trigger information? Uh, so, Sandy, this could be done one of two ways. Uh, most of the time in your call manager, you'd have CTL route points configured. Those act as your triggers. You can also uh, check inside of your CCX administration. Um, and that, I believe, can be found under the in CCX admin under the subsystem tab. You should see it, uh, an option that calls uh, labeled UCM telephony uh, and then triggers. And that those would outline all your triggers. And those, uh, as Vic uh, kind of explained, is your you would want your main criteria to be for all calls going into the queue. Uh, so based off of triggers. Um, we do have a few other questions coming in. Um, from Lou, is there a way to find out which menu options may have been selected by a caller in CCX? So great question, Lou. Um, in this format, uh, this is strictly off of CDR data. So to call manager's perspective, call manager does not know what is happening why the call is, is in possession of CCX. Um, so this would kind of migrate off of the actual CUCM CDR data and be found within the CCX data. So um, I know that was another webinar series that we did, but within the CCX data set, we would be able to find that information uh, both at a summary and call detail level. So um, that's uh, kind of the gray thin line between call manager data and CCX data, but rest assured that's in CCX data set. All right, any other questions for Dan or Vic? One once. David mentions this is a recording, uh, still very good. Um, this, is, this is not a recording, this is a live webinar. Um, but uh, we'll be sure to get the first demo uh, link. I believe, Bill, we have that recorded and up on our website. Yeah, we have part one available. Um, if you log in on the webinars page, you'll be able to access that on demand part one of Cradle to Grave um, CDR reporting video. This will probably be up by end of day for you to share uh, within your org. So, David, uh, we'll get that link out to you here after the, the webinar just so you could uh, see that first webinar series. Uh, that was kind of a preface to this one. Any other questions? We have a couple minutes left here before we announce the lucky winner of the $50 Amazon gift card. Any other last questions? If you have a question after the webinar, just reach out to Vic, Dan, or myself. We'll get those answered. Going once. Any questions? Twice. Sold. Sold. All right. And the winner is Jerry Hager. Congrats. You have won our $50 Amazon gift card. We will be in touch to get your information after the webinar. We'll be reaching out. All right. Next week, every Wednesday, remember, 11 a.m. Pacific, we host a webinar on a variety of topics. Next week, February 26th, will be UCCX Wallboards going through CCX wallboards, how to create widgets within a dashboard. So sure, if you haven't attended uh, this webinar before, make sure to go to the webinars page and register. We'll see you next week. Thank you all. Have a great day.
Thank you, everyone.